What you see in purple is the connective tissue attachment to this roughened surface. The collagen fibrils, as you'll see, circle these bumps in the uh, titanium, and this will be a physical attachment. I will distinguish the difference between a Sharpie fiber in the cementum and a physical attachment. But both serve the same purpose. They prevent the apical migration of the epithelium, allowing the connective tissue attachment to be secure. So if you remove a laser lock abutment and you replace it with another laser lock abutment, you will get soft tissue integration. So that may be one of the strategies to look at for your final abutment. Our conclusion from this paper is immediate implant placement is predictable if you use a laser lock and it's, the success rate was very high. It's 96%, we only have a one fail. What I'm looking at today is instead of using regular componentry to fabricate our provisionals, it may make sense to take some of these pre-machined components that have laser lock on them and actually make our provisionals using these components so from day one where we insert the implant we can take advantage of laser lock and its soft tissue advantages. Here the graft combo or the, I should say the graft material, the go-to graft is a mineralized delta graft. I've worked with mineralized delta grafts for 18 years now. The 10 years prior to the 8 years with Mineros was a different mineralized delta graft that worked quite nicely, was available only in a Kinsellis um, mode and that worked well except that what I have found with this particular 0.6 to 1.2 millimeter particle size, this lends itself extremely well to predictable uh, graft results as we're going to see. The regenerative capacity of a combination of cortical and cancellus really makes all the difference. So as we're going to see here, we're able to tuck this under the facial, under the pelletal, and again, having done now literally over 1,200 cases all together, meaning extraction sites and all ridge type grafting with this particular material, the predictability, the regenerative capacity as I've seen is absolutely off the charts. The exuberant regenerative capacity is extremely predictable. The concept of the tissue being attached to the implant allows you to push the tissue then to the interproximal so that this attachment here allows you to push the tissue to get a little bit better papilla. Due to the periodontal disease and they have to be replaced by implants, all of a sudden the laser lock gives us the opportunity to maintain the crystal bone and to maintain the interproximal soft tissue. Now you've seen this histologic picture numerous times already at the meeting, but the idea is that if you can place an abutment at the time of surgery and that abutment happens to have laser lock, what a wonderful thing because it gives us the potential to bind tissues to the abutment. And think about it, if you don't take the abutment off ever again, you're not disrupting those tissues. You're not going to injure them and cause wound healing again. And I usually can get these implants because of the type of thread design and taper. I usually can get very, very good initial stability. Look at the bone we have over the top of this. I've been using the Tapered Plus implant for quite some time, and I can tell you that this is not um, you know, this is not an isolated incident, but this is more of the norm of what we get with the new, with the Tapered Plus and the platform switch from BioHorizons. There is no other implant that shows functional orientation of fibers. There's not one. This is the only one. This is so important. Here, though, we, we see something that now we have an implant that's behaving like a tooth. I think that's a huge important step in the right direction.